Updates on China's sweeping COVID-19 outbreak, cars lining up outside funeral homes in major cities, some gathering in the middle of the night. Some families forced to keep the bodies of their deceased loved ones at home. Overloaded funeral homes now with days-long wait times for services. An unusual death toll among China's privileged. Why didn't benefits and aid from the Chinese Communist Party shield them from the disease? An expert explains. Italy urging its European neighbors to test travelers from China for COVID-19, as other nations are ready to welcome them. And more U.S. weapons for Taiwan. A $180 million sale gets approved by the Biden administration. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China's sweeping COVID-19 outbreak is getting more serious. The nation's biggest cities like Beijing and Shanghai were first to feel the impacts. Now, other major cities are starting to see long lines of waiting cars outside funeral homes. Some of them even lining up the night before to get services. Let's take a closer look. A video shared online captures the scene outside a funeral home in the central Chinese city of Nanjing. On Wednesday, private cars lined up outside the building, all of them transporting human remains. A worker at the funeral home told us on Thursday that wait times for here's transportation are indefinite. If you make an appointment today, you won't get a hearsay today for sure. You have to wait for the hearse driver to contact you. There's no way to give you a specific time now. The worker added that even when the customer transports the remains with their personal car, they still must wait in line outside the funeral home and that no farewell ceremony is possible for the deceased person. Another similar clip comes from the eastern China's Nanchan city, filmed at 2 a.m. on Tuesday. It too shows a long waiting line outside a funeral home. A voice heard in the video says more than 80 cars were already waiting for services. First make an appointment and then line up. First pull the body over and line up. We start working at 5 a.m. You must line up the night before. Northern China Xi'an City, the Xi'an Funeral Parlor says it's operating at full capacity all day long, but still cannot meet demand. Before the pandemic, the parlor only needed to operate for half the day. This according to Chinese media. One resident told us that over the last few days, the situation has gotten worse locally, with infection rates rising and locals reporting fewer symptoms. He blames the issue on a lack of state preparation. To protect his identity, we distorted his voice. I couldn't sleep last night. I was furious because the country opened up without preparing well beforehand. We have nothing now, no medicine, and the regime is still praising itself all day long. It says it's a great victory in the fight against the pandemic. So shameless. Through this pandemic, the Communist Party has completely lost the trust of the people. We'll keep you updated on new developments. News reports are coming out of China. With funeral homes overflowing, residents in some areas say there can be a days-long wait for post-mortem services, meaning some families may have to wait days before the bodies of their loved ones can be transported out of their homes. A resident in Shanghai posted on Chinese social media Weibo about the issue, saying that he's had to keep his father's remains at home for two days. That's because all funeral homes in his city are overloaded. He explained his father died on December 26th. Since then, he's reached out to funeral homes, citizen hotlines, and even offered bribes. But the earliest appointment he could get for services was after the new year. He wrote in his post that his father tested positive for COVID-19 and that he planned to burn the remains in his neighborhood. The post triggered a lot of discussion online. After it started garnering attention, local authorities helped him get funeral services. Another Shanghai resident described the city's situation to Radio Free Asia. The scariest thing is not the dead, it's that a large number of corpses are left at home for one day, two days, three, four, five, six days, seven days. Elsewhere in China, some underground parking garages and makeshift hospitals are reportedly being converted into morgues. Officials, experts and public figures have been dying in unusual numbers amid the COVID-19 outbreak in China many of them closely aligned with the Chinese Communist Party.
Why didn't their privileges and resources, known to come with CCP affiliation, shield them from the disease? We get the inside scoop from an expert. Weeks of obituaries have been hitting China's media. Over the weekend, another high-ranking CCP official died amid the latest virus wave. Li Ziliu, the former mayor of China's southern economic hub, Guangzhou. He was among at least 50 CCP officials who have passed away since the start of December. The list also includes 45 prominent scholars and professors. Almost none of their obituaries listed cause of death. Inside China, it's widely understood that those closely aligned with the Chinese regime enjoy certain privileges. So why are people who typically have greater access to resources and other aid getting caught up in the COVID-19 turmoil? It's that these people are overprivileged, and for a long time they're in a hospital, like a nursing home, and they're given special treatment, and so the privileges that they get end up killing them. That's with the infection ripping through China's vast population. 1.4 billion people are finding themselves ill-prepared for the sudden surge. The public, with a lack of natural immunity to weather the outbreak after nearly three years of COVID-19 restrictions and the upper echelon of the CCP, who've largely shielded themselves from the pandemic over the past few years. Suddenly, both groups may now be more vulnerable to the latest infection wave. Beyond that, a source has said that hospitals in Beijing are suspected as the origin of this virus wave. According to Radio Free Asia, a CCP insider disclosed that the outbreak has been spreading in major hospitals in Beijing since October. But authorities have concealed the news. The insider said the cover-up also led directly to the deaths of a large number of retired senior CCP officials that were hospitalized there. On the other hand, China affairs analyst Hung He says many CCP officials and prominent figures have received organ transplants to extend their lives. What's more, a military hospital in Beijing has touted a so-called health project for CCP leaders, with a goal of extending their lifespans to up to 150 years. High-ranking CCP officials or interest groups within the system have a particularly long lifespan. It relies heavily on replacing their organs with those from young people. Many deaths in the elderly are caused by organ failure. But then they become very fragile and need to be carefully protected. So the virus is particularly dangerous to them. The COVID-19 devastation has continued to unfold in China, despite Beijing's assurance on Tuesday that it's fighting a prepared battle. With much of China battling a severe COVID-19 outbreak, a kind of medication has risen to coveted status. Called Paxlovid, the drug is an antiviral made by Pfizer. Beijing is now restricting imports of COVID-19 medicines, despite the infection surge. So as the unprecedented virus wave strips resources and citizens struggle to access medication, China's elites and officials are stockpiling supplies of Pfizer's COVID-19 pill, only to give it away, to curry favor with business associates. Paxlovid is the only foreign medicine approved for treatment of COVID-19 in China. The country is only importing several hundred thousand boxes, far short of demand. When a hospital in Beijing offered the antiviral drug earlier this month, it sold out within hours. Right now, the price of Paxlovid per box in China has climbed sixfold, from over $300 to over $2,000. Amid skyrocketing demand and supply shortages during the virus spike, Chinese citizens are turning to the black market for generic Indian COVID-19 drugs. But the price for those, too, has skyrocketed. Looking at the scale of the outbreak in China, plus doubts over Beijing's official data, more countries are weighing on how to treat travelers from China but they're taking a variety of approaches. The context, Beijing will allow Chinese citizens to travel abroad starting January 8th. First on the list, Italy. On Thursday, the country urged its European Union peers to test arriving Chinese travelers for COVID-19. But many are saying no, like France, Germany, and Portugal. Elsewhere in Europe, the UK and Norway are also skipping the advice. And Australia, opting not to change its entry rules for passengers from mainland China. Back in the European Union, so far only Italy has ordered COVID-19 tests for travelers from China. Earlier this week, an airport in the country tested passengers arriving from Beijing and Shanghai and found almost half had COVID-19. 
but no new virus strains were found among them. Across the Atlantic, U.S. officials say air passengers from China will be required to test negative before boarding flights to the U.S. China's borders have stayed all but shut to foreigners since early 2020. The reopening raises the prospect of Chinese tourists returning to the global shopping market, once worth $255 billion a year. The island of Taiwan could soon increase its weapon supplies. That's thanks to a potential $180 million arms sale approved by the Biden administration on Wednesday. It comes amid ongoing tensions between the island and the Chinese regime. Taiwan's defense ministry said that the sale would take effect in about a month. The United States is Taiwan's strongest international backer and main source of arms. Washington has long provided defense gear to the island under the terms of the Taiwan Relations Act. It legally requires Washington to arm Taiwan with the means to defend itself. The latest sale has bipartisan support. The move is likely to provoke anger from Beijing, which views Taiwan as part of China. In recent years, Beijing has been ramping up military, diplomatic and economic pressure on Taiwan. The island enjoys its own democratic constitution and has never been ruled by the Chinese Communist Party. One of China's top global ambitions may be seeing a setback. According to a former official from the country's central bank, China's digital currency is little used. Financial news outlet Cai Xing shared the Wednesday remarks. Xi Jinping served as Financial Stability Bureau Director of the People's Bank of China. He expressed disappointment with the results of a trial the bank ran. In some provinces and cities, China had started incentivizing the use of China's digital currency, the digital yuan, two years ago. Some experts have called it a first step towards China's top financial ambition to replace the U.S. dollar's global dominance. But she had pointed out that during the two-year trial, only 100 billion digital yuan were circulated. That's about 14 billion U.S. dollars. She added that usage of the digital yuan has remained low and largely inactive. In comparison, before the pandemic, the daily circulation of the standard yuan was equivalent to about 285 billion U.S. dollars. Next, an update on Tesla. The electric car company is planning a reduced production schedule to start the new year at its first overseas factory located in Shanghai. The slowed output will run through January, extending a reduction it began this month. The details comes from an internal schedule seen by Reuters. Also based on that schedule, Tesla will halt production from January 20th to the 31st, marking an extended break for Lunar New Year, a public holiday in China. Tesla did not give a reason for the planned slowdown. What's more, it's unclear whether work outside assembly lines would continue at the plant during the downtime. The Shanghai factory is the most important manufacturing hub for the EV company. It employs 20,000 workers and produced more than half of Tesla's output in the first three quarters of 2022. It ran normal operations during the last week of December last year and took a three-day break for Chinese New Year. Amid news of the production slowdown, Tesla is facing other concerns. The company is expected to fall short of its growth target for 2022, while its stock has lost half its value since early October. Investors fear both slowing demand and chief executive Elon Musk's Twitter involvement. The company cut prices for the Model 3 and Model Y in China by up to 9% earlier this month, hoping the incentive would help sales. Tesla did not immediately respond to a request for comment. French aerospace company Safran is facing over $17 million in fines over bribes allegedly paid in China. That's according to a statement from the U.S. Justice Department. The jet engine maker is based in Paris, but the case centers on its U.S. subsidiary, Monogram Systems. The company allegedly paid bribes to obtain lucrative train lavatory contracts with Chinese authorities. It will be required to turn over profits from those contracts. Safran is currently working with General Electric to produce Boeing 737 engines. 
In response to the charges, the group fired an employee allegedly engaged in misconduct. Saffron is cooperating with the government for further investigations. Manufacturers from the U.S. and around the world shifting production out of Asia. Most are vacating China and heading to Mexico instead. Here's more. The difficulties of maintaining global supply chains have pushed more and more companies to cast their nets wider or diversify. According to the Mexican Secretary of Economy, 400 North American companies were exploring moving their operations from Asia to Mexico. She says companies don't want to put all their eggs in one basket and they don't want to put all their trust in Asia either. Javid Group is an Arizona-based company that helps foreign companies overcome the legal, fiscal and regulatory hurdles of starting operations in Latin America. Before 2022, Javid worked with two or three clients a year. But in 2022, it's worked with six clients setting up shop in the country and already has lined up four more for the first quarter of 2023. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. The new year is around the corner. But will 2023 provide a fresh start? Or will it look more like 2020? Experts say the answer has a lot to do with China as it moves toward reopening its borders. How is China really faring? as a battle surges of COVID-19 cases? And could those risks spill over into other nations? On our new program, Newsmakers, we spoke to Dr. Sean Lin, a former U.S. Army microbiologist, to find out more. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Ma. See you tomorrow.